Well, greetings, people of the internet. Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Today, nothing special. Pay no attention to that machine sitting next to me. We have a special guest today. Thanks to the lovely folks at Lenovo for reaching out to me. I do appreciate it. Uh, they got in contact with me. Oh, it's been about almost three weeks now uh, and said, hey, would you be interested in evaluating another server uh, if we send it to you? And I said, sure. So Lenovo sent this beast, this beast of a server along. It's the SR650 version 2 or V2. Uh, and they put a couple of lovely silver processors, Xeon processors in there. Some, they filled it with uh, three or 400 gig SSD drives uh, and sent it on my way for me to evaluate. So what I'm going to show you now is the specifications on the machine. We'll take a little tour of it. And then we're going to install an operating system on here and put this beast to work. Now this is going to be a multi-series of videos on this Lenovo. We are going to do torture tests on this. Um, we're going to put, we're going to return this car <laughs> with a hundred thousand miles on it. We're going to be brutal to this thing uh, because it can handle the load. And I wanted to give you an idea of the the kind of power uh, this server possesses. So let's get to that part right now. All right, so let's uh, go over to the. Uh uh, specifications page from Lenovo on this server and you'll see um, this server is not inexpensive but it's not too expensive uh, considering what you get with this uh, with this unit so it's got lots of drive bays you can add and remove drive bays uh, you can uh, your processor options on this are up to a third gen Intel Xeon scalable uh, processor. I have a silver one in there right now, or two of them. Um, so it's a two year up to sec uh, two time third generation Intel Xeon scalable processors with up to 40 cores and up to 270 watts TDP. You can have up to 23 and a half inch or 42 and a half inch drives and up to 32 NVMe drives supported with the NVMe switch adapters. You can have two M2 boot drives in RAID 1 and two 7mm boot drives in the rear in RAID 1. Uh, the memory, uh, you have 32 slots for DDR4 memory. Maximum of 8 terabyte using 32 by 256 3DS RDIMMs. Uh, you, it also supports the 16X Intel Optane persistent memory 200 series modules as well. You can have up to eight PCI Express uh, 4.0 slots, one OCP3 slot, one uh, cabled HBA RAID adapter, up to 8x single width GPUs or 3x double width GPUs. The network interface is a LOM adapter installed in the OCP3 slot, one USB 3 Gen 1, uh, one USB 2 with X-Clarity uh, X mobile support and one VGA optional or one external diagnostic handset port. On the rear, you have three USB 3.1 Gen 1s, one VGA, one RJ45 for management, and one X serial port. And then you have software RAID, standard optional hardware RAID support, redundant power supplies, up to 1800 watts platinum. Uh, you get the Lenovo X Clarity controller, and it supports Microsoft, SUSE, Red Hat, VMware, etc. Uh, the warranties are one and three year uh, customer replaceable units and on site service. Next business day, nine by five, and optional service upgrades. So, you know, it, it's like buying a new car with a server of this kind of caliber because everything's going to be, uh, you know, an updute or an upcharge. Yeah, and so the long and the short of it is, is this is a very customizable uh, storage uh, or server from Lenovo. So with one server, you can make it serve many tasks, if you follow me. It could be your storage server. It could be your, you know, 
It could be your virtualization server. It could be a compute node for, you know, popping uh, some grid-like uh, video cards in there to do computational tasks. So the things you can do with this server are just kind of limited only by your imagination and your pocketbook because, you you know, however you decide to configure it, you're going to need to uh, shell out a serious amount of cash to do that. And rightly so, because this thing is is an engineering, a bit of an engineering marvel. It's a uh, very nice piece of equipment, well well put together, well engineered, and uh, uh, I'm I know I'm very happy with it. I can't wait to get the riser, my hand on riser card, so we can uh, perform some other tests on this machine. So just a little catch up on what I've done on this IBM 
as far as Windows Server goes, you know me. I put a Hyper-V on it. That's what we're going to do. And I've created, I've done something I've been meaning to do for months and months and months and just never had the time. So now I've taken the time and the opportunity to use this very powerful server to get my uh, lab templates created. So what I've done is gone out and created a bunch of Windows 10 machines and a bunch of Windows 11 machines. And I got them just the way I wanted them. Normally what I would do is sysprep the machines and then export them and then that way I could import them in any time I wanted. Uh, but sometimes you want to take images, you want to export virtual machines that you already have set up because you either can't sysprep them uh, or they're perhaps Linux machines or they're perhaps some machine, some virtual machine you've got some specialty piece of software on and you want to make a backup copy of it. That's when the export feature would come in handy as well. So that's what I've done. I've got, I do have some uh, Windows 10 and Windows 11 sysprepped images, but these images I want to make backup copies of. So what I've done with each and every one of these Windows 10 Pro and Windows 11 Pro images is to export them onto an SSD, one of the 300 gigabyte SSDs that uh, Lenovo was so kind uh, to include with this server and I just I just put them into a folder on that drive on the U drive called exports now what I want to do is I want to copy these uh, these exported uh, virtual machines over to my export folder on my DS1621 my Synology NAS because I want to keep these images there so I can use them later so I'm going to do the first Windows 10 images. I'm just going to right select them all. I'm going to right click and choose copy. And then we're going to paste them over to the Synology NAS. And it should start out nice and strong. It's got a 10 gig connection. I've got a fiber connection on this uh, IBM or slash Lenovo server. The uh, SR6, what is it, 650 version 2 that I'm running. Um, so we'll let this copy and uh, we'll see how it uh, we'll see how it comes out at the end. And here we come into the home stretch now. So pretty good speeds, considering we're uh, copying from uh, SSDs onto spinning rust. Now I need to do the same thing with the next five Windows 11 machines. So we'll select them, right click, choose copy and paste. And we'll let that go. And I think you get the general idea. And now we have the two LabNet2 two, uh, domain controllers to copy over there. So let's go ahead, I've exported them. Let's go ahead and drag them and copy them over here to exports. And we'll let that run and uh, come back when we're done. All right, so I've got everything backed up and, and uh, put in a safe area. And now what I want to do is I want to start, 
I want to bring up my uh, two domain controllers first, so I'm just going to right click and choose start on each one of the uh, Windows Server 2019 uh, domain controllers. Uh, DC01 is also DNS and DHCP uh, controller for the network. Uh, it is on the uh, VLAN 40. So we've got the VLAN identifier turned on. Let's just verify that we have it turned on for each one of the domain controllers, and we do. And now these two servers up here, the, one of these is going to be Windows Deployment Server, and the other one's going to be a Windows uh, Software up, or Server Update Service or Software Update Service. If I if I end up doing it, but they're just for there for now. Now we have a bunch of Windows 10 machines and we have a bunch of Windows 11 machines. Now, none of these machines have been joined to the LabNet 2. Uh, local network. I don't believe, but that's not going to be uh, what I'm worried about or what I'm focusing on. I just want to get the domain controllers up and running. They are. They're talking to one another. Then I want to bring up all 10 of these virtual machines. So I'm going to go ahead and start each virtual machine. Meanwhile, let's bring up the uh, task manager on this Lenovo and see how it's handling the load. As we get each VM to start. Now, some of these virtual machines I've given four cores, some of them I've given two cores. I've given all of them eight or four gig of RAM, um, just as a starting point. You know, like what an entry level office machine might be running. Most everything is running a quad core these days, but you still get the odd dual, you know, like a dual Celeron or something like that. So I just thought that would be a good mix of uh, equipment. And because I don't have a whole bunch of virtual machines, I mean, nowhere near the capacity of this machine by any length, I didn't see the need for dynamic RAM. Um, if I had more you know, uh, workstation VMs running, I'd be concerned about it. So now what I intend to do is go into each virtual machine and load a copy of folding at home on it and just letting it rip on that virtual machine for a while and seeing how it does. So why don't you come along with me on the first one? We'll do, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll do a Windows 10 unit. And then we'll do a Windows 11 unit. And then I'll do the uh, rest behind the scenes. So I'm just going to log in as me. All right. And then I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go see if I can find my server. By its domain name and I know, or by its machine name, and I know that's not going to work. So let's try. Yeah, we'll cancel on that. Let's see if I can see that uh, five subnet. There we go. I can. So we'll go into applications, and then we'll go to. Uh, I think I've got an under folding at home. Uh, yeah, that's one back from 2019. I will use it. And I think what we're going to do is just use the recommended. Now, nah, I'm going to put it on full bore. Once this starts up. Okay. And we'll allow access. Now 
And we'll fold as anonymous. And I'm going to go ahead and pull it over to full. And then I'm going to close this. And I'm going to open Task Manager. And see if we actually have all the cores. Yeah, if we have them all in use. And we do. Okay. And now let's go do the same thing with the Windows 11 unit. I believe this is only a dual core. Let's find out. Let's go to settings. Yeah, it's a it's a two core uh, two core unit. So let's go to explore. Oh, applications folding at home. You're here somewhere. Windows 11 is starting to grow on me. As you can see, I'm actually filming this, recording this in a Windows 11, on a Windows 11 machine, but it's not a real machine. It's a virtual machine uh, with VMware workstation. I've kind of created a little sandbox that I can use for YouTube videos and so far, so good. I've had really good performance with it. I would not know it was a virtual machine. Now, for whatever reason, you click on Allow Access and it takes quite a while for this to disappear. There we go. I'm just going to start without data, continue, I'm going to fold as anonymous, and then I'm going to kick it into high gear. And then we'll close this, bring up the task manager. There you go. And actually, I may switch the other Windows 11 units to uh, four CPUs just to, to see how it does. But I'm going to go ahead and set up the other units and set them up to running folding at home um, without filming the process. You've already seen me do it twice now. Um, and then we'll come back and we'll see what kind of uh, see what kind of uh, utilization we're getting on the server. All right, so I'm doing my last Windows 11 unit. Now that I've gone back and assigned these units four cores. So I just need to go to my Synology NAS where I have everything stored here. Actually, I could do F for folding. We're going to run the installer. Tell it you trust it. I just do an express install. Yeah, these machines are pretty performant, these uh, VMs I've set up. Of course, this is a very fast server. Thank you again, Lenovo. Um, it's one of the most stable, secure, I mean, one of the most stable performance servers I've used in quite a while. So again, you have to allow it access and then give it, you know, 10 seconds to go through. And then I just set mine to full. And then uh, let's bring up Task Manager. And make sure all four of those cores are getting exercised. And they are. So now I'm going to come back here to the Lenovo server. And here we are now. So you'll see we got about 55%. What I love about Windows, if you look over there on Hyper-V CPU usage, even though the CPUs are being used at 100% within the virtual machine, it's only showing 5 to 
on Hyper-V. Now, I don't know whether that's 4 to 6% of the total CPU availability. I, I don't know how they make that measurement. But as you can see, it is definitely exercising those CPUs out there. But it's putting those cores to work. And it's even uh, consuming quite a bit of memory. This is not as tough a test as like Prime 95 would be. Um, and I've run that on here as well. Uh, but as you can see, it's uh, it's handling the load just fine. So I'm going to let this run for a while and let it fold. Uh, let it do some work for folding at home. Let's go out and see if... Uh, one thing we can look at is see how much power this is consuming. As you can hear behind me, the fans have ramped up quite a bit. So it is performing. It's pulling almost 400 watts, 389 watts. And it's using only available. It's using only 363 watts of that because of the trade-off you get with the uh, efficiency of the power supply. The fans are active. If I click on them, they're about at um, only 32% per percent of their speed. So that's not bad. Utilization. Uh, again, you can see the steady power increases. We've increased the load on this server. Um, and then here's how much uh, CPU memory, I.O. and system resources it's using. Well, there you go. So you got to see the server, how it's built, uh, how it was designed. We've talked about the technical specifications on it. We've talked about how you can fully customize this server to make it suit any task that you might have. It's fully customizable. I mean, you can make it, like I said earlier, you can make it be your storage server. You could make it be your virtualization server. You can make it be your compute node. The server has so much flexibility, it can do all those things and and can do some of them at the same time. So you could have, you know, put all your chickens in one basket or all your eggs in one basket. I don't recommend, but this server could handle that load very efficiently. So now we've only put Windows on here and put it through its paces with Windows. But I think, I mean, we've run Prime 99 on here. I've run Folding at Home both uh, both as a resident application at the root of the server install and I've also installed it on up to 10 different virtual machines as you saw running uh, virtual machines on this unit and it never bit missed a beat. Now the fans are not overly loud. They're less loud than I thought they would be. I mean I put this server out there at full bore. I had all the all the cores hitting and everything and and I would never say the fans got more than about six or seven thousand RPM and they're double fans so there's a fan in the front and the rear as i showed when i pulled it apart so uh, th keep in mind though this is not designed to go behind my desk where i can hear it every day droning on it's designed to go into uh, you know a data center into a storage room uh where there's you know good efficient cooling and and uh where nobody minds if it's loud or not because nobody's there to hear it but I did hear it, the drone, and it does. By the end of the day yesterday, I was, uh, because I put this thing through a lot of work, I was ready to beat it with a hammer to shut it up. But a simple unplug of the power cords will do that. But again, this is not designed to be something you sit under your desk or on your desk or even in a server closet unless it's got a door on it because it's going to be a little bit loud. It does that to keep cool. So you got to expect that kind of thing. Now, moving forward, what are we going to do with this server? Well, we're going to do a lot of things with this server. I've reached out to Lenovo and asked them to please send me some riser cards for this unit. So hopefully those are on their way to me. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll be putting some things on here like perhaps VMware, Proxmox, XCP, maybe TrueNAS, FreeNAS, whatever, whatever NAS you can think of. We're just really going to build, we're going to do a lot of videos around this unit, just show you how flexible it is. Uh, of course, I went with Windows. It was my first choice because I know Windows very well, and I can really put a server through its paces running Windows, where I can't really do that as well with something like Proxmox or XCP or even VMware. 
So which OS are we going to install or which underlying hypervisor are we going to do next on this beauty of a server, on this gem? I don't know. Uh, I, why don't we take a poll? Why don't we vote? I'll put the thing down there in a vote. Uh, I'll put it in the community forum or in the community tab. I'll put an option down there. You guys decide which one we're going to do next. Do you want to see this thing run VMware, Proxmox, what? You let me know and we'll make it happen. So anyway, we hope you found the video entertaining and informative as always. So give us a thumbs up down below if you liked the video. Leave your comments down in the comments section. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And click that notification bell so you'll be notified when I release new videos. We're trying to do at least one video a week. Uh, been keeping up with that pretty well. So time and uh, components allowing and... Uh, it takes a lot of work to get one of these uh, servers up and running and to show you to take get some statistics to show you data with so uh, it, it might mean that it delays other videos but I don't know I'm probably just talking out of my rear end again but anyway please come back and see us donate if you're if you're so inclined PayPal patreon the YouTube join function are all acceptable uh, options thanks for coming to see us and please don't forget we'll see you on the other side.